Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems, very biased collection as usual. Um, today I would like to talk about the one billion dollar equation if you want. Uh, so continuing my uh, kind of little series about the uh, Millennium Surprise problems, and this one is about fluids, and essentially that fluids are difficult, well maybe not fluids themselves, but maybe, well the fluids are certainly difficult. Differential equations are difficult. Essentially the idea is the following, um, writing down a differential equation, describing a real world problem is usually not that difficult, but kind of then trying to solve it or solving it is like <laughs> really, really complicated. And I hope I will make this clear without going too much into details what actually the $1 million equation really is. And I will clearly not explain how to solve it because otherwise I would get a million dollars, I guess. Um, anyway, but let's just jump right into it and I'm going more into the why and uh, what are the main questions. So for me, differential equations is kind of really just describing how a system evolves. That's just it. You can think of um, the pendulum, pendulum, like really simple system. Uh, yeah, well, it moves like this and this and this and this all the time, but you know how it works. You can write down the differential equation and you can solve it uh, pretty, pretty fast. It's not, it's not really difficult. For more, well, exciting real world problems, well, I should say exciting, for other real world problems, you can still write down a differential equation. For example, here in my little example, where I have some fluid uh, or some air or whatever you can think of it, and there's some, some sphere somewhere blocking it, and we want to know how it actually moves around uh, the sphere or something like this. But it can get actually really complicated. So it could actually, uh, for example, depending, pretty much depending on the initial conditions, could actually be more like, like in the picture below. And then it does some, some funny uh, kind of fluctuations around here. It's like a really much more difficult system. And if you just look at it, then it's kind of clear that it shouldn't be described by a very simple function. So it's probably really difficult to solve it. But essentially the idea is, well, differential equations, they describe how systems, certain types of system, real world or not, how they evolve and yeah, um, depending on how simple your system is, you should expect a nice answer or it will be very difficult. So for the bottom one, probably I wouldn't expect any nice uh, kind of easy function describing it because it gets quite difficult. But maybe it's actually then the correct question is more like, can we do something numerically or can we at least say that there is some solution, but we don't really describe uh, the solution. So here's an example where I'm really one of my favorites. We run that in a second. So really that may, should make you believe that most kind of real world system shouldn't have any um, solution. And this one is actually related to the, the $1 million equation because it is about a fluid. Uh, it's about honey. Whether honey counts as a fluid is a good question or not. Let me just count honey as a fluid. Well, honey is a fluid. Um, it's, it's a very sticky fluid, you know, and that's what you will see in a second. So there will be an experiment that I will run uh, in, in a video, which is not my video, link is in the description, that would be amazing. It runs on a, on a little band here, the band will move and nothing will change in the experiment itself. And then the honey will kind of form a, a lot of funny patterns, you'll see that. So the band is not speeding up or anything, the band is always kind of moving at the same speed. And this kind of, as I sort of learned this like 12 years ago or whatever, uh, when this video came out, it was like really kind of a little bit of an eye opener for me. And maybe most differential equations probably don't have any nice solutions and are probably really hard to describe. So let's have a look at the video. Excellent. So here we are. Um, so some syrup or honey, whatever you want, is falling on a moving band and we'll see some funny patterns. So in the first place, it looks like we can describe this. It's not very difficult. Then it starts to do some, some interesting movements. Uh, so as I said, the belt always moves at the same speed. So that's not what's happening here. It's kind of um, the, 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 the fluid here is so kind of sticky that it kind of whatever happens on the band will influence whatever comes down. Um, now we are kind of like the sign patterns. And I'm still, well, maybe we can describe this nicely, but in a, in a, in a second it will get quite, quite beautiful and chaotic. So this is like a sign of, oh, there was sort of a first interesting pattern and now it does something completely insane. Um, and it looks like it stabilizes, but it will change its pattern in a second again. It's kind of really, really absurd. And uh, now it does 
uh, interesting. And I'm still those little guys here. And it, yeah, now it starts doing several of them. Uh huh. Interesting, interesting. And it's just, got, I love this. It's kind of really, really cool. And so it just does a lot of them in a row. Ah, it's so, it's so amazing. Uh, so beautiful. Uh, yeah, so absolutely. Watch the watch the video. It's linked in the description. And here are the credits. Yeah, I hope that makes some sense. I hope you like this one. And it's kind of a really beautiful illustration of why a seemingly easy problem, but maybe you would say, okay, fluids around the sphere, that might be difficult. But here, honey, just dropping on a belt, that shouldn't be so difficult. And it just gets completely insane. Um, anyway, so maybe what you really should do is, uh, instead of kind of looking for a, or any solutions, which we probably won't find, we should do numerically, which is usually enough for kind of real world applications. Uh, or we should at least show something like there's potentially an answer, whatever nice means, um, but we maybe not be able to write it down. So maybe that's that's much more kind of the better question instead of solving a differential equation because solving differential equations is like difficult. <laughs> I hope you remember my little. Uh, honey, not my the honey video, not my honey video, the honey video, the honey video, and well, that's where the Navier-Stokes equation comes into the game. It's really just an equation that you can actually write down quickly, so you can convince yourself fairly quickly that this is what you want to do. It's kind of here it is, whatever. Uh, don't look at it too closely. It's an it's an equation. It's a differential equation, and it's supposed to describe the motion of fluids. And what a fluid is. So for example, it also describes like this here, which is certainly not a fluid. So like um, how the air uh, moves around a car or a jet or something like that. So it's, it's really like a really important equation in engineering. You, know, so you, want to, you want to optimize your car, you want to optimize your jet. But it turns out that the equation is fairly easy to get. It's Navier-Stokes that was 1820, 30, 40 each. That's kind of uh, easy to get. I hope that was right. I didn't double check that. It's a long time ago. Uh, anyway, um, it's kind of really easy to get, but to solve it is, is well, it's a millennium surprise problem, right? To really solve it is a millennium surprise problem. And I think people realized, well, by now this is kind of well understood, but roughly around the break of the last century, so from 19 to 20, um, people realized that this might be really difficult. There was this famous body problem which is also just easily described by differential equation and then solving it is like good and people found like the beginnings of chaos theory and all of that uh, difficult stuff whatever you want to call it anyway so here um it's fairly easy to get but what about solutions is like one of the key open problems because it is like really applicable it's kind of your jets your cars remember like fluids in general um it's really everywhere in engineering but it's like really difficult to solve. But obviously people played around with this. So some solutions are known. The two-dimensional case is solved. There's a book about the two-dimensional case, um, pretty famous. I put it in the, in the description. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it's open access, but I still put the name of the book in the description and it solves it in two dimensions. So actually the two-dimensional system can be can somehow completely described. The solution is too difficult for me to put it in the video. Uh, there's a book about it, you know, uh, but anyway, um, yeah, so something is known and in particular numerical solutions are really, really good. So that's, you shouldn't worry too much about your, your, uh, your, your airplane crashing down because this, there's no exact solution known. But for in 3D, we still don't know the existence of nice solutions. And that's essentially, uh, that's not essentially, that is the problem that you would, that would give you a million bucks, right? Can you solve this equation here, uh, which looks harmless, but it's really condensed. And can you can just solve it or not solve it, just prove existence of certain nice solutions. Um, that's really a theoretical question. I would like to make this clear here because we really have quite good numerical solutions. There's a whole theory about numerical solutions of this equation because this equation is the $1 million equation. It's really important. It is a $1 million equation. Well, that's not a good reason to make it important. It is the equation that turns up everywhere in engineering. That's a good reason why it is important. And really, just most computer algebra systems have something built in. Uh, I just told this picture, um, and you can just simulate that, and you can just really numerically find uh, nice solutions. And that's usually enough for practical purposes. So the, the question is really a theoretical question. 
It's a bit annoying somewhat that there is a fundamental equation that describes the motion of fluids, which is crucial for, the, for how the world works, and you can't really solve. And that's, that's why it is uh, one of the most important problems in mass. Oh, and that's why you get a million dollars if you just show existence of solutions. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I also hope to see you next time.